Trust lever on the affected engine set to idle Engine master of the affected engine set to off And the fuel crossfeed valves can now be opened To rebalance the fuel quantity Or to enable the use of fuel from both weights Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel Captain SQ where we're going to discuss on Airbus systems, emergency procedures and supplementary techniques on how to fly the plane. Alright, alright, alright. Welcome to A320 Fuel League. Disclaimer, always refer to your company manuals, this video is merely a guide. And before we start, do click on the like button, subscribe, and press the bell for the latest updates. Okay, let us dive in. Significant fuel leaks rarely happens, but if they do, we pilots are trained on how to deal with the situation. Question is, what are the signs of a fuel leak? Number one, let us take an example. You departed with 10 tons of fuel. Every periodic 30 minutes check, check that the fuel used on board and fuel remaining equals to 10 tons. If not, then the aircraft might be leaking fuel. Number two, also check that the estimated flight plan fuel at every waypoint in your flight plan. If there is a large difference, then there might be a sign of a fuel leak. Other means of detecting fuel leak will be number three, an ECAM warning might trigger. Number four, Destination EFOB turns to amber on the MCDU. However, make sure that you properly sequence the flight plan first. Sometimes you are on heading mode for a prolonged period of time and the flight plan on the MCDU is not properly sequenced. Number five, destination EFOB below minimum message on the MCDU. Number six, a passenger or crew observes fuel spray from the engine pylon or wing and no, the A320 do not have a fuel jettison feature. Number seven, fuel is smelt in the cabin. Number eight, the fuel flow is excessive. Number nine, a fuel imbalance is developing. There you have it, a lot of indications to show you that there might be a fuel leak. Of course, when a leak is confirmed, land ASAP, you are running out of time. Let us dive into the leak location. This is where it gets interesting. A fuel leak can come from four possible areas. The first will be the engine or pylon. The second will be either from the wing tanks. The third will be from the center tanks. Or the fourth will be from the APU fuel line. The QRH will then guide us to determine which of these four locations the fuel is leaking from. Let's start with the engine or pylon area. This can be confirmed by the excessive fuel flow indications on one side or a visual check. The QRH will then guide us for the shutdown of the engine on the affected side. Trust lever on the affected engine set to idle. Engine master of the affected engine set to off and the fuel crossfeed valves can now be opened to rebalance the fuel quantity or to enable the use of fuel from both wings. Do not restart the engine. Remember, do not restart the engine. This is pretty straightforward. If the leak is not located, this is where it gets tricky. The QRH gives us two methods to determine the leak location. I divide them into case 1 and case 2. Case 1 is we have to determine if the fuel leak is coming from the engine or pylon or the wing tanks. And case 2 will be to determine if the fuel leak is coming from the center tank or APU fuel line. Before we proceed on to either case, Maintain the fuel crossfit closed. You want to stop fuel transfer between the left and right systems so we can monitor the depletion rate of each inner tank. Then only we can see if the leak is from the engine or wing center tank or APU fuel line. Center tank pump 1 and 2 off. And now we turn our attention to the inner tank's fuel quantities. 
Case number one, if one inner tank depletes faster than the other by at least 300 kilos in less than 30 minutes, the QRH guides us for the shutdown of the engine on the affected side. So thrust lever idle on the leaking side, engine masters off on the leaking side, and center tank pumps one and two on. Monitor the fuel leak, and if leak stops, then the fuel leak can be confirmed from the engine or pylon. The crossfit valve can now be opened to rebalance the fuel quantity or to enable the use of fuel from both wings. Do not restart the engine. If leak continues after the engine has been shut down, a leak from the wing tanks may be suspected. In this case, consider an engine restart. This will use some of the remaining fuel in the fuel tank that is leaking. We cannot stop a leak that is coming from the wing, so might as well use some of the fuel to run the engine until the fuel runs out. Now let us see case 2. Case 2 is for us to determine if the fuel leak is coming from the center tank or APU fuel line. You will notice that both inner tanks is depleting at a similar rate. If APU is on, then turn APU off. You will stop any additional fuel loss. Then when fuel quantity in any inner tank is less than 3 tons, turn center tank pumps on. Approach considerations will be to check your aircraft limitations regarding maximum asymmetry between wing tanks in your manual. Do not use reverses on landing. And some bonus here, I would like to talk about fuel over read. Sometimes when we add up the fuel used and unused fuel, the sum is more than the fuel we have on departure. Or maybe an abnormal discrepancy between the fuel on board and estimated fuel in the flight plan. Also, sometimes the destination EFOB is abnormally high, even after proper flight plan sequencing. In that case, refer to your QRH under the section Fuel Overread. The QRH tells us to check again fuel on board and fuel used. Once you confirm that the fuel quantity is unreliable, then disregard FMS fuel predictions and calculate manually your fuel on board. Take your initial fuel figure on departure and subtract the fuel used. Remember that fuel low level alerts still remains reliable. Why is that? If you know the answer, do comment below. Once you land, get some maintenance work done on the aircraft before the next flight. Mm -hmm.